While I was a student teacher in secondary social studies classes, I saw many students struggling to remember the order of historical events during individual units and throughout the course. Even though the course content was taught in chronological order and the students frequently created timelines for the content, students still had difficulty placing events in the correct order, which is an important aspect to understanding history. For this project, I wanted to learn about memory associated with the order of events and find an associated theory to improve my social studies instruction. My research led me to an introduction of serial recall and the Hebb effect. When students must remember something they have stored in long-term memory, they're working with recall memory. There are three types of recall memory, free recall, queued recall, and serial recall. Serial memory is the processing and memory for the order of events. Donald Hebb studied neurophysiology and is better known for his theory about neurons and synaptic activity. In the mid 20th century, his research on serial memory resulted in a discovery that became known as the Hebb effect. Hebb wanted to research serial memory because as he said, there was a gap between the theory of learning and the practical advice one can give to the student who wants to know how to study more efficiently. This research seemed to fit with my goal of learning how to teach more efficiently. In Hebb's original experiment, a researcher verbally presented a set of nine digits to a subject and asked the subject to repeat the digits back in the same order. During the presentation of 24 sets of digits, every third trial the same nine digits were repeated. Hebb assumed that with each new stimulus, which was a new set of nine digits, the previous set of digits would be wiped clean and there would be no cumulative learning. The subjects proved Hebb wrong because the majority of them learned the repeated sequence. At the end of the experiment, the subjects remembered the repeated set of digits regardless of whether they had noticed the regular repetition or not. Other researchers have since replicated Hebb's results using various inputs besides just numbers, such as letters, words, and visual images. The methods of presentation have also varied from verbal, visual, and auditory. The key discovery is that regular repetition, as opposed to random, during a serial recall task leads to improved memory performance, and this is the Hebb effect. The hypothesis for my study is that the regular repetition of an order of events in a cumulative manner will result in a Hebb effect. Instead of working with numbers, letters, or single words, I wanted to test phrases, in this case historical events, to make the study more applicable to teaching social studies. Unlike Hebb and other researchers who used highly familiar material, my subjects will not be familiar with the material, which makes the situation similar to those encountered by students in many classes. The main goal was still to discover if repetition results in learning. My mini-experiment involved two subjects, Zach and Joe. They are 12-year-old fraternal twins who attend 6th grade at a rural middle school. Each boy was interviewed individually, beginning with Zach as the control subject and Joe as the experimental subject. The material for this experiment was the major events leading to the start of the Civil War as determined by the Virginia Standards of Learning for U.S. History 1. The subjects are currently taking this course, but they have not yet reached the 19th century, and they are unfamiliar with the subject material used in this study. I began the interviews with each boy by asking them a basic background question. So what do you know about the Civil War? The country was divided into two sections, the Confederate and the Union, and Virginia split into West Virginia and Virginia of slaves. Both subjects knew that the Union defeated the Confederates, which side was the North and the South, and that slavery was an issue involved in the war. I then provided a limited amount of background information, such as the definition of secede and the historical time period. After I provided instructions, the miniature lesson began. I wanted the experiment to run like a condensed version of a class, where I acted as the teacher and the subjects acted as the students. I displayed the title of each event and the subject wrote the title down as if to simulate note-taking. 
After he finished writing the title, I provided a brief description to simulate a lecture, but the subject did not have to write any of this information. All right, so first we have the Missouri Compromise. So you just write first one, Missouri Compromise. This, allowed, this happened in 1820, so the first part of the 19th century, and it allowed Missouri to enter the Union as a slave state and Maine to enter the Union as a free state. It kept the balance of power between the free and the slave states in Congress the same. It drew an imaginary line through the Louisiana Purchase, and slavery could not exist. It could only exist below the line. It couldn't exist above the line, so it kept slavery in the South. This compromise kept the peace for 30 more years and added six new states while keeping the number of slave and free states equal. So next we have the Compromise of 1850. This routine continued through the seven historical events with SAC, the control subject, without any repetition of the events. I chose seven events because working memory is limited in capacity to plus or minus seven items. With the experimental subject, Joe, I repeated the previous events at the start of the lecture on each new event. This repetition was cumulative, with the first event being repeated seven times and the last event repeated only once. So we have the Missouri Compromise, then this Compromise of 1850. California entered the Union as a free state. Right, so we have Missouri Compromise, Compromise of 1850, Kansas-Nebraska Act, Abraham Lincoln elected president, the seceded states formed the Confederate States of America, Confederates fired on Fort Sumter, and Lincoln called for troops to stop the Southern Rebellion. This happened after the attack on Fort Sumter. He called for troops to stop the Southern Rebellion and preserve the United States, so he didn't want them to go and make their own country. This marked the beginning of the Civil War between the North and the South. At the end of the lecture on the seven events, I allowed the subjects a moment to read over their list. I then removed the list and gave them a worksheet with the seven events in a random order to see if they could put the events in the correct order. Okay, I'll take this. Okay. And first, just write your name up in the corner. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to put these in the order that they happened. You can just write the numbers 1 through 7 beside them, or you can rewrite them down here, whichever you choose. I was unable to prove my hypothesis because the control subject outperformed the experimental subject by putting all of the events in the correct order without the use of any repetition, and the experimental subject missed two of the answers. Therefore, there was no Hebb effect. Joe switched two of the middle answers, numbers 4 and 5 which is a transposition error. When recalling a list of items, it is common to have the most errors in the middle of the sequence. Remembering the initial items is known as primacy effect, and this occurs because they are the most repeated items and are transferred to long-term memory. Correctly ordering the last items is known as recency effect, and this happens because the more recently discussed items are still in working memory. Based on my findings, a Hebb effect does not exist when the input material is a multi-word phrase like the titles of historical events I used, although I still believe the use of repetition in the classroom will benefit students when trying to place events in a time period. Many researchers cite repetition as useful for committing items to memory and activating prior knowledge. Even though many social studies courses are taught in chronological order, the teacher still failed to repeat the titles of previously studied events. For example, at the beginning of a unit on the Civil War, a teacher could say, Remember, we have already studied the American Revolution and the War of 1812. I believe even a simple statement like this could help activate students' memories, because it is surprising how many students do not remember which came first, the American Revolution or the Civil War. Previous experiments that resulted in a Hebb effect used shorter items that were familiar to the subjects, and my attempt to expand the usefulness of the Hebb effect failed. A longer study with more subjects over a course of time that more closely resembles the pace of learning in regular classes might yield different results. My study may have been unsuccessful at proving the potential for regular repetition during a single course unit, but repetition can still benefit teaching and learning.